Hey everybody, it's Lon Seidman, and we're taking a look today at the new MacBook Air. Uh, this is replacing probably Apple's most popular laptop, and it's also more expensive now. And we're going to be doing a full review of this, but also looking at the MacBook Pro 13, uh, especially the one like I have in my hands here that doesn't have the touch bar, because this one only costs $100 more, but delivers better performance. I'm gonna talk about the differences between these two in this review, because I think a lot of people in the market for a Mac will be wondering what the difference is, given the price difference isn't all that much. So we'll explore that, and I'll also have some recommendations for folks who might be in the market for a computer and think maybe this one is too expensive. So lots to talk about, let's get to it. Now I do wanna let you know, as I always do, in the interest of full disclosure, that this MacBook Air was actually purchased by my father uh, for his own usage, and when I found out he bought one, I took it for a few days to do my evaluation on it. Uh, the MacBook Pro here is one that I bought for my wife about two years ago. Uh, so nobody is paying for this review. No free product was provided for this review. All the opinions you're about to hear are my own and no one is reviewing or approving what you're about to see before it was uploaded. So let's take a closer look now at the hardware. These start at $1199, about $1200 on Apple's website. Uh, that is an increase from where the MacBook Air used to start at, so it's definitely taken a uh, price jump here. Uh, oddly, they still offer the old design for around the original entry point of around $1,000, so you can still get the old one, uh, but the new one looks a lot better and has a nicer display. Speaking of, it's got a 13.3-inch display, 2560 by 1600 resolution that runs at 227 points per inch. It is super sharp, it is super bright, it uh, looks every bit as good as the display you'll find on the MacBook Pro. And that's one of the things that Apple's done very well over the years is put really nice displays on all of their computers. I think they're among the brightest in the industry, if not the brightest. So if you want a nice and bright display, uh, you'll definitely get it here with one of these Macs. They really uh, have been impressing me over the years with that. Uh, eight gigabytes of RAM to start. Uh, also 128 gigabytes of storage to start at that $1,200 price tag. And then things really escalate from there. If you want more RAM or more storage, you're going to have to pay up front for that and pay a hefty premium as well uh, because you cannot upgrade these computers. They are completely locked down. Uh, so RAM and storage are fixed from when you buy it and that is it. So if you need more storage at the get-go, you're gonna have to buy it at the get-go. Uh, you can also, of course, plug in external storage if you want. And if you're doing a lot of photos and videos and whatnot, you'll probably want to subscribe to Apple's storage plan to offload some of those things so that you don't run out of space too quickly. It's definitely uh, going to be limited with the 128 gigabytes that are included there. Now, the big difference, though, between the MacBook Air and the Pro is the processor that is inside. Now, if you go on Apple's website, it'll indicate that it's a dual-core i5 processor. If you look at the MacBook Pro specs, it looks like it also has a dual-core or i5 processor, uh, but the chips are very different between the Pro and the Air. The Air's chip is a mobile processor, the i5-8210Y. It gives you better battery life, but that comes at the expense of higher end performance that you might need if you're video editing or doing some really high end photo work and that kind of thing. Uh, if you are just browsing the web and doing word processing, it should feel fine as you'll see in a few minutes, but if you're used to a faster machine, this one might feel a little less snappy as a result because it is running with a less powerful processor. Even though they're called the same thing, they are very different and I think it's important to know that going in. So that lack of performance though, again, will get you better battery life. In our testing, we were seeing about 11 hours, give or take, uh, doing basic tasks like web browsing and email and that sort of thing. Uh, that's about two hours better than what you would get on the MacBook Pro doing those same tasks. So this is a uh, more efficient computer, but again, you're giving up some performance in exchange for that. Uh, so again, keep all of that in mind. And it's very confusing how Intel and Apple have decided to uh, label these processors. I don't think it gives the consumer the full picture. Now, the weight of the MacBook Air is a little less than the Pro. Uh, this is 2.75 pounds or 1.25 kilograms. Uh, the MacBook Pro, by comparison, uh, comes in at 3.02 pounds or 1.37 kilograms. So not a huge weight difference here between the Pro and the Air. Uh, they look and feel very similar too, although they tapered the front of the 
uh, MacBook Air a bit to maybe make it stand out or have it represent what the Air used to look like. The MacBook Pro is uh, pretty much uh, square here throughout. Uh, like the Pro, it's got Thunderbolt 3 ports on it, uh, two on the Air. They're on the left side of the computer. Uh, these are multifunction ports, so you can plug in uh, USB Type-C devices, Thunderbolt 3 devices. You can deliver power to this through these ports and get video out. I believe you can drive two displays with this. Uh, you can get docking stations that give you a single cable to provide power, video out, and a bunch of additional ports so that you can plug in uh, regular USB devices if you want. We've covered those kinds of devices in the past here on the channel. So very versatile ports, but you only get two of these on the MacBook Air. On the other side of the Air is a headphone jack. It's kind of becoming an endangered species on Apple products, but at least on their computers so far, those headphone jacks have remained. Uh, the keyboard, though, is still just as bad as it was before. Uh, this is the Butterfly keyboard. I've had a lot of problems with these. I have two Macs with the Butterfly keyboard uh, that I own. Both of them have problems. My wife has been having some issues with hers as well. Now, in fairness, my keyboards are from two years ago before they made some improvements. So I'm going to be sending all of my Macs in one at a time for repair. There is an active repair program right now. Uh, what they've done to make the keyboard better is add in a membrane that they say will keep dust and other things out of the key mechanism. Uh, so hopefully that does fix the issue, but only time will tell on that. Uh, so just be prepared for that. You might end up with some key problems down the road uh, because it is essentially the same keyboard just with some changes to it. Uh, the trackpad here is uh, probably one of the best trackpads in the industry. Apple's got this trackpad that doesn't actually have a physical button, but it feels like there's a button because there's haptic feedback when you push your finger down. Uh, it's really cool and it's fun to uh, show it to people and say, hey, do you think there's a button here or not? So you can click anywhere on the pad and get uh, that feedback. It is a very sensitive trackpad, but it's also smart enough to know when you really intended to push it versus just having your wrist resting against the device here. So they continue to push out some really good trackpads there. Uh, and altogether, I think a pretty nicely put together laptop from Apple. It's not fanless, there is a little fan that runs, but because this chip is a little more efficient, uh, it doesn't get all that hot and you don't hear the fan all that much either. So relatively quiet fan that rarely kicks on only when you're really stressing the computer out. So let's take a look now at some performance. We've got a 1080p video running at 60 frames per second from my YouTube channel and we are seeing some drop frames. That's not something we typically see with a Windows computer at this price point, but we're definitely uh, seeing it here on the air. You might not notice it, but it's definitely something that stood out for us in testing. Other web browsing seems to be just fine. We went to the nasa.gov homepage, which has got a lot of multimedia elements. Uh, that rendered up very, very quickly and is pretty snappy and responsive. And on the browserbench.org speedometer test, we got a score of 128 on the 1.0 version of that test. Uh, on the 2.0, we got 74.5. And I want to direct your attention to the Yoga 730 from Lenovo that you'll see on the chart there. Uh, we looked at that one a few months ago. That's got an 8th generation quad-core i5 chip that's in most mid-range laptops now. This is the non-energy uh, efficient chip, essentially. Uh, that one came in at 164.1, uh, which is a decent size bump over what we're seeing here on the MacBook Air. So it's certainly a little slower on paper. You may not notice it all that much while you're actually using the computer, but you'll see here that uh, there are faster chips out there on less expensive Windows computers right now. And we also loaded up some other applications like Pages that you can see here running right now. Pages, of course, is Apple's word processing and page layout application. It felt pretty responsive and uh, not all that different than what you might see on a low-end MacBook Pro, so that felt okay. So again, I think doing web browsing and that kind of stuff is going to be fine. It's when you move into other things that you'll certainly notice a larger difference. Uh, so we ran the uh, Bruce X Final Cut Pro benchmark, and what it consists of is rendering this two-second 5K video that has a ton of different layers on it, and this really taxes some of these computers when rendering that out to a file. You can see what it looks like here in Final Cut Pro. So on the MacBook Air, that two-second video took 171.5 seconds, over two minutes to render two seconds of video. Uh, that same video on a MacBook Pro 13 from two years ago uh, rendered out at 69.5 seconds, just over a minute. So you can see here, just with the older i5 chip, 
uh, we're doing a lot better because that chip is better optimized for that kind of work. Now, if you're doing iMovie and some things that really aren't all that taxing, it's not going to be a huge difference, but I do think you'll see faster render times for uploading to Facebook and YouTube, for example, using a MacBook Pro versus a MacBook Air. So if you're looking at video editing, I think your choice here is to spend the extra hundred bucks to go to something a little faster. Now these MacBooks are not known for their gaming prowess, but we decided to run a few games on it anyhow to get a feel for that. Uh, so you're seeing Rocket League running right now. This is the Mac version of Rocket League. We're getting about 20 to 35 frames per second at its lowest resolution and setting, 720p. Uh, and we were seeing a lot of slowdown and lag as more things happen to uh, pop up on screen. Uh, the Windows version might be a little more consistent there, but I would not expect frame rates any better than 30 or 35 frames per second here uh, on this hardware. Uh, we also ran Half-Life 2, which is an older game, about 12 years old. Uh, our frame rate counter didn't work on that particular game, but it felt playable and I was expecting it to feel that way on this hardware. We've seen it run uh, just fine on older hardware. Uh, that one also was running at 720p. Uh, we ran also something a little more fun, Shovel Knight. Uh, that one got us a solid 60 frames per second, so you can run more casual games here, I think, without too many issues, but it's really not a gaming machine. Uh, none of the AAA Windows titles will run well on this, and I would recommend uh, this really being more of a productivity tool than a gaming tool, but you can play a few things on there. Uh, if you do have a lot of games purchased on Steam in the uh, Windows side of the world, uh, those Steam purchases will work on the Mac if there's a Mac version available for free. You don't have to buy it again. Uh, so if you do have some games before you go to the Mac App Store, uh, install Steam and see what you got already, and you could probably run those on there. But typically the Mac games don't run as well, even if you did have a discrete graphics processor like you might have on the MacBook Pro 15. So again, not great for gaming, but you can load up a few casual things and uh, run a few games every once in a while. Now normally at this stage of a review, we look at some gaming benchmarks uh, that I run in Windows, and I could not get this Mac to boot up Windows. There is some new security hardware on board that makes it more difficult. Even disabling that security hardware did not get Windows to boot. I couldn't get Boot Camp to work, which is usually the way you can boot up Windows on a Mac. Uh, so I think there might be something going on that has to get patched because I tried everything, couldn't get it going. So I did run, though, uh, a different benchmark called Geekbench. And let's take a look at that right now. And you can see here the MacBook Air scored 3,951 on the CPU single core test, 7,786 on the multi core test. The GPU test came in around 21,154. They call that the compute test. Now, Geekbench on their website also had scores from a current MacBook Pro 13 that costs only $100 more than this computer does. Uh, the single core test came in at 4,318, the multi core at 9,072, and the GPU performance is also greater at 30,452. Uh, so that's a pretty decent sized performance gap here on paper. We also saw that performance gap on the Final Cut test we ran a little bit earlier. And later this year, there's no doubt that Apple will put the newer Intel chips into that MacBook Pro, which will add two more cores. Uh, and will also probably deliver better graphics performance. So that gap is only going to get larger. And if that price difference is only $100, I do think you're getting a lot more uh, with the MacBook Pro if you are indeed in the market for a Mac. So again, keep all this in mind as you're shopping because the difference between these two computers in price isn't all that much, but there's certainly a big performance difference. So if you're in the market for a Mac laptop and you know that's what you want, I think the MacBook Pro here is the better buy of the two. It's $100 more for the entry point on the Pro, but you're going to get a much faster computer as a result. And there isn't much of a size and weight difference here. They're pretty much the same size laptop. The displays are very similar. Uh, they did make some you know, cheats here with the case to kind of taper things off and make it look a little thinner. But for the most part, it's going to feel the same as you're walking around with it. But again, you'll have better performance out of the Pro. Battery life isn't as good on the Pro, but it's still pretty great for this kind of machine. And I think you're much better off spending the extra 100 bucks and getting the performance. If this thing was thinner and lighter, I'd have a very different opinion. I am very fond of the MacBook uh, 12 inch. They probably should call this a MacBook Air now too. 
Uh, this is a great little computer that is very thin and light with great battery life and really is a fun device to travel with. In fact, in most cases, I take this versus my iPad because it's so much more usable for me. It's a full-fledged Mac here that's like two pounds, and it's a very nice portable computer. Uh, the 13-inch one here doesn't live up to the heritage of the MacBook Air name, and I was expecting something uh, different than what Apple put out here. So again, if you got the extra 100 bucks, uh, go with the Pro. If you're not sure you want a Mac, I would go out and look at some of the i5 powered laptops that are running Windows because those come in at a considerably lower price tag. Uh, most of those now are running with the uh, eighth generation Intel chips which have quad core processors now which will be even faster than even the current generation MacBook Pro. And again, you can get a much greater bang for the buck on Windows if you are not in need of a Mac to get your work done. So keep all those things in mind. I'm really fond of that Yoga 730 I looked at recently. I think it's a very good machine for the money. And there are others out there from Dell and HP as well that are worthy of consideration. Until next time, this is Lon Seibin. Thanks for watching. This channel is brought to you by the Lon.TV supporters, including Gold Level supporters Chris Allegretta, the Four Guys with Quarters podcast, Tom Albrecht, Gerard Newberg, and Kalyan Kumar. If you want to help the channel, you can by contributing as little as a dollar a month. Head over to lon.tv slash support to learn more. And don't forget to subscribe. Visit lon.tv slash s.